So today, let me just quickly just add this that I want to talk about. Michael, I want to add them, uh, uh, Michael and Gabriel. If I can't get to Gabriel, fine. But I'm gonna, let me add something about Angel Michael. Now, Michael as an angel, because these are, I want to talk about the, the two common manifestations of angels based on who they are. There are two common manifestations of angels. There's the Michael manifestation of angel, and there is the Gabriel manifestation of angels. The Michael manifestation of angel is the war, warfare manifestations of angels. The Gabriel manifestations of angels are the information-based manifestations of angels. They don't fight. They can't fight. Some of them can't fight. Some of them can, but don't fight. Some of them are not sent to fight. In terms of that manifestation, the Gabriel manifestations of angels. So if you have... Uh, I'm going to, that's where it's very important that we get into that part. But let me just get back to Michael. The Michael manifestation of angel is what a lot of believers always think angels are about. The wars, the fight, the attack enemies, the, you know, and all that. And then let my enemy have accident on the way. I know that Jesus is Lord. Those kind of things. Now, uh, the name Michael means, in the original Greek, means who is like God. So it's a, it's a challenge word. It's a challenge name. Who is like God. So if anybody uh, or any circumstance is trying to challenge the existence of God in your life, that's where the angelic presence, the Michael angel presence is revealed because that person will not be allowed to take God's glory and God's place. Michael's own status is to fight for that glory that belongs to God, that is God's. I don't know if you understand that. So if in your life, for example, sicknesses or diseases or whatever the case may be, or demons or what the case, or maybe even a human is trying to take that, that place, that's when there could be a need for a Michael uh, uh, interference. Daniel 10, and behold, an hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hand. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken these words, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel. For from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to trust in thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. It says, but the prince of Persia, is somebody there? But the prince of the kingdom of Persia, now the word prince, I will deal with the issues of prince some other time when I move a little bit from angelology to demonology when I'll be talking about uh, that, but in between, I need you to understand that the word principalities does not necessarily mean demons. The word principalities does not mean demons. Just be aware of that fact. So, I, would, I, I just want to lay that aside. So, you just be aware of that. Okay, then. The prince or the principalities of the kingdom of Persia will suit me one and twenty days low. Below Michael... One of the chief princes, there is a prince of Persia. Michael is also a prince. This we are talking about are the levels of the princes, which are the levels of principalities. We are the levels of princes, right? And so we're talking about that. And then it says, came to help me, and I remain there with the kings of Persia. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days. For yet the vision is for what? Is for many days. So this, this is an angel who had an information. What did this angel say it was coming to do from that 11th verse? He said, and he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee. So this angel was coming with what? Was coming with information. It was not coming with the mandate of a warrior. So he was coming under the Gabriel manifestation to deliver information. He wasn't coming with the Michael's authority to fight. Therefore, even when held by the Prince of Persia, he cannot operate under the Michael's mandate because his commission was not to fight. For as long as the Prince of Persia kept the angel, it remained there because his mission was there are the two dimensions of operations and this operation which this angel held at the time was what? That of delivering what? Information. information. Just stick with me. Now, he had finished delivering this information to Daniel. If we skip right down to verse 20, he says, Then said he, Knowest thou wherefore I come to thee? Do you know why I came to you? He said, And now I will return to fight. Now, watch that. Now I will return to fight. The prince of what? 
of Persia. Because now he has an encounter with Michael and has also been recruited into a Michael army. I'll read the next verse for you to understand why there is a shift in this angel's focus now. Now he says, I will return to fight with the prince of Persia, and when I am gone, lo, the prince of Gracia shall come. But I will show thee that, that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And this is none that holdeth with me in this thing, but Michael your prince. So who stands by me in this decision of this battle? Now I am beginning to operate with what? With Michael's own mandate. And Michael is your prince. Because of course, when we talk about kingdoms, spiritual kingdoms, there can't be a kingdom without a king. So even in the spiritual, there's a king. That's why you hear the term, the king of Persia, wasn't making reference to the physical king over the land of Persia. Because the physical king over the land of Persia cannot arrest an angel. So in the realm of the spirit, there are territories. There are rulers. You call them rulers of darkness. There are rulers. There are principalities. And there are also, called, there are also powers. Before powers can even operate on you, you as a believer, like I began by saying, need to be aware that you are the first major custodian of power. <laughs> power is a level of spiritual authority. Power is a level of spiritual authority. Just be aware. So Michael, this angel says, I'm going to go back to fight. And he says, no one stays, no one is with me as concerning this right now except Michael, your prince. See, the Michael was always defined as somebody who, and Michael did not show up to deliver any message. All Michael came to do was wrestle free the angel and ask him to go carry out his task. Michael doesn't do those information delivery tasks. That you must note. Somewhere Michael is mentioned again. Everywhere Michael is mentioned, there is some kind of war or trouble. Michael doesn't show up when it's peaceful or that. He's like, who is trying God? See, what who is like God in a contemporary pigeon sense is who won't try God? Is this kind of circumstances that you are looking for a Michael effect? Do you understand now? Is that easier now? Okay, good. Verse one of just, just one verse of, of uh, Daniel 12. And at, the ta- at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people, which standeth for defense. Do you understand that? Standard four means what? Defense. Defense. And there shall be a time of what? Trouble. So when Michael stands, it's an indication that trouble is around and it's Michael's job to respond to trouble. Such as never was since there was a nation. Even to that same time, and at the time thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. I just passed there, just to give you a highlight. Then there's another mention of Michael again, right? And this time, it's in the book of Revelation. So let's just read that one. Revelation 12, verse 7. Revelation 12, verse 7. Revelation 12, 7. If there's trouble, there's Michael. (laughs) We don't expect trouble. But if there's trouble, we're ready. Amen. Okay, let's just, I want to read another thing. Uh, Re- Revelation 12, verse 7. says what? And there was war. So the moment you see the word war, the next angel that comes to mind. Good, good. And there was war in heaven, and Michael and his angels. So watch the qualification. Michael and his angels. So he has what? His angels. Let's talk about Michael and the angels of God. We're talking about Michael and the angels assigned to, t- to deal with matters of war. Fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his what? So the dragon has what? His angels. So the, the angels of the dragon, right? The angels of the devil are called devils or demons. So they are all angels for the dragon. Michael has his angel. Michael is a typical also a typical figure of the person of Christ. So, and the dragon fought with his angels and prevailed not, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil. Then came the name Satan. Then came the duty that deceived the whole world. 
Then came the judgment. He was cast into the earth. Then came the demonic operations. And the angels were what? I guess if I don't over-explain that, it's, we are still, right? One of these days, I will take time and I will go to the book of Revelation. Then we'll, st- we'll just go to the book of Revelation from chapter 1 and just enjoy uh, the veils. We'll look at the veils and look at the trumpets and look at, uh, look at the marks of the beast. Because a lot of, I've had a bit of terrible things about the mark of the beast. I don't know where that's coming from. But the, we'll look at the number 6 and 6 and 6. We'll look at all of that. Those things that some of you are afraid of. You will go with this, your might. <laughs> Amen. Now, Jude was one of that person that wrote about Micah's encounter with the devil as concerning Moses. Like, this is how the picture is painted. Moses annoyed God. God said, Moses struck the rock twice. God looked at it and said, okay, Moses, because of your thing you've just done, you are not going into Canaan. Now, let me quickly just pause here and tell you why that was a big offense. The rock that was struck for water to come out was a typical person representation of the person of Christ. The rock represented Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was only supposed to be crucified once. Was not supposed to be crucified twice. In that once crucifixion is when the fountain of life is supposed to flow. Right? And at that point, he says that you should strike this rock once, not twice. Because if you do that, you alter the spiritual meaning and essence Meaning that now he will be persecuted and killed and then his body, being the church, will now be struck. The striking again will return again with the church again. Because what you do in the Old Testament is a reflection of that manifestation in the New Testament. So if an instruction is given to you to make it A, B, C, you make it A, B, C, not A, B, C, D. And you don't make it A, B. So in terms of that striking that Moses did with the rock, call him the rock of edges, and the Bible actually said, describe that rock, that they gave it a different name. The Bible says, the rock that followed. When I talk about the rock, one day I will teach you and show you how that rock was actually an, act, an actively mobile rock. The Bible referred to the word, it followed them. So it was kind of a source. It has been smitten. At the point, it even said, this time around, don't smite the rock again. It has been smitten once. Speak to it this time. Do you understand that? Yeah. Speak to it this time. And Moses went in there, a pie, pie. The rock produced the result. But then you have altered a spiritual law. And spiritual laws are important. Prophets, priests, they are spiritual laws. Some of them you don't even know is written. It's not like spiritual law one, spiritual law two. Spiritual law is not the Ten Commandments. There are spiritual laws. I have not discussed spiritual laws yet, have I? But I, I have talked about one or two spiritual laws. Okay, let me not go there. Okay. There are spiritual laws. Very important that you know about them. Now, God says you're not going to enter. Now, you're going to stop here. Moses was on that mountain, right? And he had to see Canaan, but he couldn't get there. And he died and was buried around there. Now, the common sense of the kingdom of darkness is, this man offended God before his death. Therefore, didn't die righteous. So, by entitlement, we claim, we claim the body. But God's way of passing judgment on people is not man's way. Neither is it like the devil's way. The people you think are so ter- terrible as sinners, you are not the judge over their lives. All those people on social media that are passing judgments on this preacher A, Christian this and Christian B, they are not the judge over your lives. That's one thing you must know. The parameter of judgment is not handed over to them. You might believe that you are because you have read this Bible, you can judge everybody and the rest. No, you're still very deficient. Even you that judge other people, you're even putting yourself into a greater problem because you're, you're increasing the, 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 the standards by which you yourself shall be judged. That's one thing you must note. Now, when the devil came to lay a claim on that body, neither of the angels within the categories of those that should deliver information could interfere with that. None. Only the angels that are authorized to handle matters of warfare. And so Jude actually spoke about that. Let's see verse 9. Verse 9. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, does not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke thee. 
So who went for the defense of Moses' body? It was Michael. So reclaim that. Now, another thing that you must realize again is that the battle here was not for the reclaiming of Moses' spirit or soul. Bear in mind that the battle here was for the possession of Moses' body. In terms of you understanding whether you'll be going to heaven with your body or not your body, I just need to bear that in mind, that your body is a critical part of you, even when it thinks that it has decayed physically. That doesn't totally happen. Spiritual law. You are unkillable, undiable. Okay. Herod was uh, stricken by angels. An angel struck Herod, right? And Herod died. Now, would we say that the angel struck Herod because God was trying to fight for his church? Because he had killed a believer, and for that reason, meanwhile, when he killed that believer, God kept quiet, right? Until the church began to pray. Do we say that Herod was killed because God was trying to prevent him from killing another person in the church? Is that, was that the reason? Because I need to clarify your understanding. Because he killed James and he took Peter. He was about to kill Peter. It was by, when he died that Peter, you know, Peter was freed. And then Herod was later subsequently smothered by an angel. He died. So do we say that it was for that reason that, the, that Herod died? Because Peter was already freed before Herod was killed. God didn't need to kill Herod to free Peter. He had freed Peter. Do you understand that? He didn't stop killings of Firstborns in Egypt. Even when Herod, the first king, when Christ was born, a lot of kids were killed. God didn't stop it. When James was killed, God didn't stop it. Honestly, I tell you, if you put your hands, if you go in front of a moving vehicle on an express and it hits you, you will die and God will welcome you home. The mysterious thing about God, it says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his sins. God doesn't fear death. So just be careful. Or does he like, God's going to stop me? No, it, about the decision of not dying is yours to make. It's the truth. It's in the Bible. The decision of not dying has been placed on your table. If you want to die now, now, right now, and you just drink a full cup of a tapia beer, you will die now. And God will not send any angel to say, my daughter, put it down. Don't drink it. As soon as you just finish dying, anything you meet, the rest I take but you'll be very surprised. Nothing will stop you. Acts 12. Good. Now watch this. Uh, let's look at where Herod died. Let's read from verse 20 and see why Herod died. And then you can now answer the question, which group or class of angels could possibly have been involved in this duty? And Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon, but they came with one accord to him, and having made Blatros, the king's chamberlain, their friend, desired peace, because their country was nourished by the king's country. And upon the said day, Herod arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne, and made an oration unto them. And watch this. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God, and not of a man. What's the name of what's the meaning of Michael again? What's the meaning of Michael again? So Herod now they said it's the voice of a God, not that of a man. And immediately the angel. Now you don't need to mention his name, but who is <laughs> and the angel of the Lord smote him. Why? Because he gave not God the glory. And he was eaten of worms and gave us. He didn't God. He was not killed. Because the church prayed fall down and die. You see the enemies that can die. Are the ones who are against you. And are boasting about their authority. Over your life. God is in charge of my life. The moment you want to play God over me. See, you, you, can, you can tell the believer, you're not working here anymore. Leave my company, you're free. But don't ever attempt to be God over the believer's life because you paid him a salary. 
your business will go. A man who tried that with me one time and the rest, and they took my money and they, they did all that kind of drama, was about my first experience with business, I was shocked. When I had finished my whole work and everything, I was supposed to get paid, they came to me and said, uh, we noticed that you have spoiled our computer. And those early days when computers were, I'm like, the design, the stuff I did for them, I did it even with my pen. I did the card. Back then, computer was not very common. So I, I did the artwork manually with pen and ink. They used that not to pay. They left. It was a big guy. Few months after, the same man that was a big guy I saw him on the road dragging for commercial bus with me. The car was gone. Then he was now sacked by the company. I didn't pray any bad prayer for him. But for choosing to want to play God over a believer's life, you have already, Abba says, if your enemy is thirsty, give him water, give him drink. If he wants food, give him food to eat. As he continues to hate you, he, with his own hand, is what? He is heaping a coal of fire on his own head. It's not your prayer that will put the fire. It is him that will be lighting the fire on his head by hating you. If I spend the whole time in church looking for enemies to hate because my life is not good, God kill them for my sake. God is not going to kill them for your sake. God will kill them for his sake. <laughs> Herod was not killed when he killed James. Herod was not even killed when he arrested Peter. Herod was not killed when he was boasting. And all. No. But the moment Herod stepped into God's position, Michael said, what did you say? It's the voice of a God. I know that this is New Testament, but King, what did you say? It is not the voice of a man. I said, what did you say? You know when somebody dies and Margot comes out instantly, the angel must have been very angry. But why, if you could kill this man, why did you allow him to kill James? God, you're not coming to kill enemies for you. <laughs> but let those enemies play into God's trap. Let Pharaoh, Pharaoh could be doing everything. You kill, you will do that, he will torture Israel. God is watching. But the day Pharaoh chooses to play God over his people, God will say, Call him, bring him, bring him. There's a Red Sea. Bring him. Pharaoh will change his mind. God will just send one angel, go and harden the hearts more. Fine tune it. Lock, please. Lock. Come. You are Pharaoh, eh? Keep coming. Who was hardening his heart? God was, God would, the guy would change his mind. God would say, no, it's not time to change. How many years I gave you to change your mind? You didn't change your mind? You want to change your mind? No. Harden it. Come, pursue them. A man who has lost all his firstborn. Chicka, chicka, chicka. You go to a place. Which kind of stupidity will see you see a people that a Red Sea device what apart and they are going and you look at it and you say, I will follow. No, God, enter. Come. You want to be God? Just come. After they had finished moving, God now opened door for them. Clear. The gap now opened. Now you would have said, they have already gone far. Let's just go home. God said, you are not going home. I think you are God. Enter. Let them play God. I say, let them play God. I like Michael. Doesn't talk. Every place Michael is mentioned. Did you see grammar? Did you see grammar? Oh, no, no, no. Die, die by fire, die by olive oil, die by water, die by uh, die by. Uh, uh. If Michael want to kill somebody, no, he say no. Wait. Would you say you are again? You are God. So, because it's God's own child, he came here to this compound and you are landlord. That's you are now landlord. You, are now, you have removed the land from the landlord. You are now Lord. I have one God over me. Are you hearing me? Even presidents of nations who tend to want to play God, their friends turn against them. You see them, some of them, you just say one riot. And that man that taught himself to be indomitable, they will just whisk him. The next thing, they are docking him and ICC like a child. Sentencing him to death. When God wants to deal with somebody, there is Michael. But quickly, let me just say this. Gabriel means, there are three meanings I can give for Gabriel. Number one, Gabriel actually, Gabriel means 
the strength of God. That is, God is great. That's God is great, the strength of God. So I'll read a few scriptures in terms of Gabriel here. Another meaning for the word, the name Gabriel, that is Gabriel. Gabriel, that is Gabriel means the man of. El is God. It also means the man of God. <laughs> Most of the preachers that are preaching on pulpit are also tied and connected to the Gabriel ministry. That's why he says he maketh his angels what? He maketh his angels spirits and his what? And his ministers. The angels within this confine are ministers. The choir, the choristers that are singing, there are angelic components to your music ministry. Because you're ministering grace, you're ministering knowledge. Let, let me just read this. I intend, this is actually supposed to be a foundation, so I don't know why I'm actually over explaining it. My intent was to make it just a foundation for something else. Okay, let's just go this. Daniel 9. Let's go to Daniel. Let's go to Daniel so that I can wrap this up from here. I will be explaining visions and dreams when I, when I talk about uh, differentiating metaphysical worlds, talking about uh, in terms of you as a person, switching, switching environment between the environments that are physical to the environments where angels are real, within the same scope. I'm not talking about ascending. I'm talking about walking from, from an environment to another environment. So I will be explaining that. So if I go to that now, Church will not close. And church has to close. No, you know, church does not close. Church service has to close. <laughs> Amen. Church can close. But church service can close. Amen. So let's go to 16. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of Uli, not financial bank or worship which called and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. Now, a vision was given, but understanding was lacking. Not Michael's job. And Gabriel's, the, the Gabriel flock are anchored upon understanding information, ideas, words. They are the ones responsible for giving you lyrics to your song. Information, ideas. They are the one responsible for discussing your business ideas with you on your bed at night while you're sleeping. That's why you might go to bed with a problem you don't have an answer to, thinking about it while you sleep, and waking up with an answer when you wake. I don't know, because some of you don't even know that you have actually encountered angels. I want to help you here. Now, would it be amazing if you know you had encountered angels? Isn't it amazing? Okay. Now, a vision was given and Gabriel was not part of revealing the vision. Because the vision is the atmosphere. The vision is not the message. Dream is not the message. Dream is the atmosphere where the message is dispersed. I said I wasn't going to go there. Go help me. So let's come back. <laughs> Amen. Amen. This thing is just it's making me as if I don't explain that one, I can't explain this one, but I will try. Daniel has received the message. But there was no, he has seen things in the vision. And usually in the atmosphere, because the objects there don't necessarily mean what the objects mean here. So if you see these glasses in the physical, and you see these glasses in the vision, they don't mean the same thing. These glasses could be in the physical, it helps somebody with a poor eyesight to see. These glasses in that atmosphere of the vision could mean transparency visibility, shape, depend on the context in which it is utilized there, might not mean what it means out here. So when you see what you see there, you still need to understand what the relevance is in that atmosphere based on which uh, which atmosphere uh, environment <laughs> or vision you found yourself in. Right? If you find yourself in a 19... 76 atmosphere with a modern set of glasses. It definitely would mean something different in that context than you finding it in a setting 
of a 20th century environment. Okay. From your faces, I know that that's um, obviously causing trouble. I'm trying to behave. I told myself this morning I would behave. I would be very, very gentle and kind and deliver this thing in a way that if I cause trouble with your understanding, after church, you can still come and ask questions. I will manage to answer. If I answer after church, you still don't understand, I will still be here. <laughs> it says, the voice came, Gabriel, make that man understand the vision. Verse 17. So he came near where I stood. And when he came, I was afraid and fell upon my face. But he said unto me, understand. No, no, no. He didn't say to me, fear not. Fear is attached to warfare. Somebody is afraid and falls down. And the angel ran and saying, please don't be afraid. He's Mission and the entire Gabriel mission and ministry is what? Understanding. So what did he say? He said, understand. So rather than telling you, don't be afraid, I'm not terrible. He's telling you, understand. If you even gain understanding, you will not be afraid. How do you solve fear? By telling somebody, please don't be afraid. Or by giving somebody understanding that is enough to make the person to not be afraid. This is the difference between Michael and, and Gabriel. Michael will be, don't be afraid, I'm not here to hurt you. Gabriel is, understand. <laughs> if you understand, the fear will go. So they solve problems in different ways. One will solve it by battle and by force. The other one is solving it by what? So he says, understand, O son of man, for at the time of the end shall be the vision. Now as he was speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep on my face towards the ground, but he touched me and set me upright. I can stop there. I can stop there. Chapter 9, verse 21. Chapter 9, verse 21. Uh, chapter 9, verse 21. Are you there? Yes, sir. So he was confessing his sins here now. Say, so, yea, while I was speaking in prayers, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly toward me about the time of the evening oblation, and informed me. Can I hear somebody say information? information. So he was praying for forgiveness. Forgive me, forgive our fathers, forgive, and all through that. And the Bible says he had discovered certain things from the book. And then Gabriel showed up again. And what did Gabriel show up with? Gabriel showed up again with information. When Gabriel showed up in the case of Mary, right? What did he do? What did he do when he showed up? He came to tell her there is what? Did he put the child there? His mission was the what? Inform her of what she carries. I don't know how you make this. His mission was to come tell Mary what Mary already was carrying. Now, the word angel, Gabriel, means man of God. What do men of God, even on the pulpit, usually do? They tell you what you are. You are blessed. You are learned. You are a child. That's the work of an angel. That's why the preacher who preaches that is called an evangel list. Evan angel. <laughs> so you now tell somebody what he's carrying. Be the angel. Tell somebody what the person is carrying. When the, Gabriel was talking, Mary was wondering, how can these things be? He said, the Holy Spirit. You see, the angel is telling you that. The Holy Ghost is the implementer. The angel is delivering the information. 
So the Holy Ghost shall overshadow thee, and the holy thing that shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. I want to, I want to, I'm trying to differentiate between all of these spiritual beings so that you know who is doing what, who has which responsibility. Because somebody here will receive an idea that is angelic. You have tried what you can. You see, it is these angels that will go to someone who is supposed to bless you and give them the idea of working with you. <laughs> you are rabba ba center like Daniel was doing. Daniel ba center The prayer released Gabriel. Gabriel didn't come to come and scatter. Gabriel came to come and inform. Somebody will be informed about you. An angel is going to wake up the king and say, there is Mordecai. There is, there is, listen, king, don't sleep this night. Go and read. When the king will try to sleep, the angel, there is information you should have. The king, there is something you must know. So the king gets up drowsy and goes into the library. Mordecai is at the gate, worthy of being promoted, ready to be blessed. But nobody's knowing about him. And the king goes into the library. Check which book shall I read. He picks this one. And the angel pinches his hand. Put it down and back. This one. I don't like the color. This one. This one. There is dust on this one. Don't read it. There is dust on this one. Don't read it. This one. It's old. Don't read it. This one. Hey, read that one. Then of all the books, all the chapters... Should I start in chapter 1? You will not finish this night. Don't start from chapter 1. Start from 10. Start from 10. Just to keep myself busy. Mm. This is interesting. Oh, yes, wear your, wear your glasses. Wear your glasses. Wear your glasses. What kind of thing is this one? How would the story end like this? So somebody did, and the story just end. And goes to the next story. This is boring. This is boring. I mean, I've been looking for work to do. God uh, called Haman. He was on his way. Call me Haman. Haman was on his way to come and find a way to kill Mordecai. You see, the angel didn't even kill Haman, didn't make him have an accident, didn't stop him. The duty of the angel was to inform the king the information that the king will receive will work for Mordecai's sake. Those who would think that when they come to church, all God will do is kill their enemy, kill their enemy, kill. You don't know how God works. Right now while we are talking, God is injecting information into someone for your sake. For your sake. You think that guy just woke up and sent you transfer and said, I, 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 I transferred money to you. Have you seen it? That is of all the people in the world, he just got up and transferred money to you. What did you do? Somebody has informed him and made him to understand you need money. All the, ones, all the people you went talking to, give me, give me, give me, they didn't respond. Your own voice. But somebody made him understand. Or as Haman came, hey, the king said, what do you think should be done to a man that the king desires to honor? Haman The angel shifted to where Haman was and informed him that anybody with that level should be riding on a royal horse. Hey, this is what should be done. The king said to him, Haman, this night that I am, I cannot sleep. You too, you will not sleep. Go to that gate and find that security man and tell him it's about the time to ride a royal horse. And you, you will you escort him on the ground. I'm so believing that somebody will receive an information. The heart of a king is in the hand of the Lord. And like the rivers of water. Somebody will be. <laughs> oh. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
You know, I had not finished reading that chapter. But chapter 9. And informed me, verse 22, and talked with me and said, Oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. You are playing keyboard. Every time you're struggling, maybe to play like the professionals and you don't know how. There is somebody who is an additional tutor that if you submit to, sometimes he will just tell you, go and rehearse this. And you just practice it. Mm -hmm. That thing that was difficult for you to understand yesterday, you'll be very surprised how you're able to follow. But your lecturer is not there, but you're doing it. Am I talking to somebody here? Say, my purpose is to come and inform you and give, and this information will give you what? Understanding and give you what? Skills. How did you know how to sing, how you could sing? Did somebody force the training into your throat? No, somebody just told you, sing, ah, but left. But then the angel of God will tell you what to use, ah, and do. And all of a sudden, when the world hears you sing, they will not believe that it's the same, ah. We just finished singing, oh, oh, oh. what is, oh, don't you say, oh, every day. But God put it in somebody's mouth in a unique way, that, oh, is a song. If somebody said, oh, wouldn't you say, what happened? but you're singing it. Is somebody hearing me here? The last scripture I will read for us now before we begin to pray in this place and say, Lord, it's time for my own angels to come. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Wherefore shall I know? For I am old, an old man and my wife was stricken in years. And verse 19, And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God. And I'm sent to speak unto thee and to show thee glad tidings. Tell your neighbor the things that will be revealed to you will bring joy into your life. Yeah. Don't forget the people you are hanging around expecting from. Don't worry. Somebody, <laughs> Lord, let the angels begin to speak. Let them speak to every heart that should be spoken to. Once you're moving, you're getting something done. Isaiah 30 verse 21 says one thing. This is my last text. Isaiah 30, 21, what does it say? It says, And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. When you turn to the right, and when you turn to the left. He said, How do I know what kind of business to do? He said, Watch. As you're going, there is an angel whose job is to simply inform you. Now, why is this important for a roundup? So many believers think that how they will get a job, for example, is that they will just sit in their houses, Father, send me a job, Father, send me a job, Father, send me a job, and then Father will just send an angel, angel will just bundle one job from CBN and just come to them and deliver on your table, this is your job, this is your job. That's why they think God has bass voice. My daughter, I have come to give you a job. Take it. No, what else you say? Father bless me with a good job. I need to go where my skills will make sense. In the name of Jesus. What is the next thing? He started moving. He said, as you begin to move, your ears will hear. <laughs> I thought about the brother. I thought, when I said, I said the brother said, uh, discussed with me, he said, they said, uh, he, he suspected that the business was going to fold up and all that. But before the business folded up, he had already heard about a new line of business to go to. He said, your ears will hear. I said, your ears will hear. A word behind you, as if somebody is saying something to you. You know how the angels prevent you from having an accident? You just bow out and say, don't enter that car. The tire is not good. It might not even be the reason. It will just be there. Don't enter. Don't enter. The car is not fine. It is not just because the car is not fine. But there is an information meant to save you. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. You are there, the guy is bringing ice cream. Then he rushed to Mr. Beast and bring bombs. He bring, uh, and then he just tell you, come on, run. Carry the ice cream, run. Run. You don't run, you carry belly. But the angel will not tell you, you carry belly. Just tell you, run. You just lick the ice cream. Before he comes with the bombs, you don't, don't run. <laughs> but the Okbe, Okbe people, if I run now, you'll come and feel very bad. Make him come. Nine months after, we'll know who will feel very bad. 
Let him come and call your number. Say, what happened? You let him say, eh, my body was doing one kind, so I had to go home. What part of your body? The, the brain. Is the brain not a part of your body? Common sense. An angel will start speaking to you. But the problem is, will you be listening? This night when you sleep, an idea will come. I said an idea will come. In the name of Jesus. If you want to write a song, you pick your pen, you put, nothing is coming. Just Just set your heart to it. One time you will just see one music inclined angel will just start singing the song already on his own in your mind. Your own is that you are trying to memorize the lyrics. But you are hearing it inside. I don't know the sound. I don't know what you understand what I'm saying. Have you been to that point where the singing is total, you are hearing it, you are hearing it neat and clean inside of you as, as if somebody is singing it well. You are hearing even the beat, the rhythm. You are even hearing the harmony as you are listening. You are hearing it. It's, it's real. When you wake, you are even struggling to remember the words. Now you are no longer struggling to form a lyrics. You are writing what was given you. Information, knowledge, understanding. I like Michael, but sometimes I enjoy Gabriel. It's not every time. Sometimes some of the things that we need Michael for, with the wisdom that comes from the Gabrielic anointing, you can even solve it. For example, Michael will say, stay there. Who won't try God? Come, we'll go beat down. Bros, Gabriel will just say, I'm Robert, so come here. Come out. You get the difference? When Gabriel appeared to Joseph, what did he say? He said, Herod is trying to kill this child. Take this child and what? If it was Michael, Michael would try him. Michael would just stay there and say, make them come. That's the difference. Are you understanding the difference here? Yeah. Michael would say, let them what? The moment they come touch that baby, you go see what thing Michael go do. Everybody will now start saying, when the son of God came, he killed people. Because Michael needed a look. Don't go, you. Don't go. So God said, please, this Michael is done. Michael is done. So God, this thing is embarrassing. How can we all mind to be telling the whole child of God to be running from that human being? Michael, please, sit down. <laughs> Gabriel, go and tell them to, to run. <laughs> now you understand the difference now. Because somebody was asking, why would God's son have to run away from it? Listen, it depends on who is delivering the message. And all of them are protection. Are you hearing me? Either we stand here and say the roof wants to fall, let us hold the zinc, or the roof wants to fall, let us go outside and wait. When the fourth thing will come back, what do you mean? Wisdom is profitable to what? Which one will you do? Huh? Michael said, wait here, which kind of fall, let us see you. Ha, ah, Michael, me and you, they are. Gabriel will say, the roof wants to crack. Go stay outside. Run. Me, I don't follow Gabriel, run, go stay outside. I like Gabriel. I like warfare. My brothers are the follow Gabriel. Where, where. Sense, the wisdom, the information. Are you hearing me? Yeah. How did you know that it was going to happen? I leave him. It just occurred to me. It occurred to you. Does anything just occur? Somebody, your pali just told you to shift. That's why sometimes you just sit there like this. You just, your head will just go like this. Something will just pass that would have entered your eye. Science says it's reflex. Me, Gabriel, just push my head small. Don't walk like the unbelievers. That's why you are a Christian. 